The Adverse Childhood Experience Study was a collaboration between Dr. Vincent Felitti at Kaiser Permanente in San Diego and Dr. Rob Anda at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta. Developed a number of years ago to help uh, medical practitioners primarily, but now educators also, to understand adverse childhood experiences or essentially childhood trauma. The beauty of something like learning about ACEs is I would guess that there are very few people who don't have a moderately high ACE score themselves or know someone who does. Which even though the ACE study was published in 1998, it's only fairly recently that it's receiving major attention. ACEs are not considered after 18. You can have trauma, but the impact is more significant in developing brains. ACEs are major drivers. They may perhaps be the largest individual potentially modifiable input to uh, healthcare costs. The purpose of the survey is to understand 10 major childhood traumas which range from anything that include uh, sexual and physical violence in the home to neglect um, and various other forms of trauma and violence that can occur in home, community, or school settings. The higher the ACE score, the more physiological and emotional impact a person can experience. Because of a psychological impact that's driven by the neurobiology, so kids don't achieve as much in school. They don't try as hard in different activities. They end up putting themselves inadvertently at risk for other potential traumas, and it just builds from there. All of our healthcare systems are having to confront these, these diseases and these problems, especially in the mental health areas and in the substance abuse areas. Those are highly associated with prior traumatic experiences. Patients have started to work on trauma resolution. That's when you start to see the resiliency factors at play. And so a downplay of the, the trauma impact and increase of resiliency, and you start to see people emerge for who they really are. All sectors of society need to be well informed about the relationships between severe stress and trauma and an individual's success in their lives, their health, their productivity. We have several students who've had one or more parents deported, who do not live with their biological parents, who have parents that are involved in gangs, who um, were severe drug users. So all those kinds of factors can, can be compounding. And the more we can talk about these issues and make it common terminology, we start changing the equation and the issue of trauma no longer becomes such a scary thing because we also know that there is hope in that, that there is resiliency within each individual. And this is important because people don't have to remain traumatized. They can learn to have how they can impact their own life and have a better life. Students with higher ACE scores have a, a greater likelihood of using alcohol or substance abusively, greater likelihood of smoking, increased risk of high blood pressure, of heart disease, and earlier death. That really spoke to me. The combination of the ACE study and all of the other similar research, plus the biological research, which shows the mechanisms whereby early overwhelming stress causes changes in the brain, in the hormonal systems, in the stress reactivity, in the genome, and in the way the genes are expressed, all of this creates a very compelling case. If we could get the education piece out there and send the message that if you have a high score, there's hope.